everyone. So, you know, I don't know if you've had this problem. I sure seem to come across it quite too often, and it's quite annoying when it happens. It is is something that I really wish I didn't have to deal with and wish Unity had some means of doing or doing this in, you know, themselves in their application. This is something that seems like it, it should have been built in, but for whatever reason is not. So say we have an existing avatar and here we are with sticky you know uh first let's get sticky's proper material shown there we go and so what we have here is we have our little happy stick figure and it's very minimal it's a very minimalistic avatar and we're using it as an example uh for this just because it you know it's a simple basic avatar uh but you know, we like to add stuff to things in our avatar or our, well, in this particular case, a skin mesh renderer system. And what I've noticed a lot of people like to do is they will go and break this prefab or break other prefabs. And that will disassociate um, the bones and everything from it. It'll, it'll basically break it. But nobody really ever knew why it would break. Uh, and that is because this guy here, the skin mesh render, actually has a hidden uh, variable in it called bones. It is, uh, it, it's a list, it's literally just an array of uh, transforms like this that map this skin mesh render to these bones, these, you know, this armature set. Um, it's not exposed to the editor for some reason. So when... I go to think to create a uh, you know a skin mesh renderer or add a mesh to to a skin mesh renderer renderer system in this particular case. I would think to just create an empty like this, you know, and add the component skin mesh renderer just like a normal programmer would. And you would think this should work by simply finding the mesh that I want. In this particular case, let's go ahead and use a Rerune. We're gonna open Rerune here. Doot, doot. And let's put her face on here, right? Let's, let's put the face of Rune on this skin mesh, the, this stick figure. Uh, so we, we, you would think assign the face, right? And then you would think assign the hips, right? But so far, we're already seeing something suspicious. We're not seeing anything. So the first reaction here would be, oh, maybe it's missing materials. So we go and look, you know, okay, Rune skin. Okay, this should have one material on it. All right, so let's assign that material. Rune skin, right? And still nothing shows up. Okay, so, you know, maybe it's our extents. They're off wrong. Let's set these to a reasonable extent. And, you know, we still don't see it. And this is because of the missing variable, missing exposed variable called bones. Now, what I've written here for everyone is this bone remapper. The bones you see here are empty. And it's pulling this, these bones from the skin mesh renderer and sh exposing them to you. And you see, for whatever reason, it, you know, it, when you create a new skin mesh renderer, this bone list is empty and it never gets populated. Uh, so how, what do we do here then? Like I, we can sit here and add all day if we want to, uh, but we don't know what these are supposed to be mapped to. We don't know what they're indexed against. So that's not gonna be a good idea. Um, that's where I created this method here, spawn prefab bones and map, if you choose to do this manually. Now, if you really do want to do that, you can click this, and there you go. There's all your bones. They were created, and they were put as a child to, well, in this case, we were working on a face, the face. Okay, so now we have all those bones. We can see them and whatever. Now, I would ask that you avoid the knee-jerk reaction of taking these bones and copying them over here to the armature. What I would suggest that you would actually do instead is go in here and find the hips and find hips here and then remap it over. Then now you have a reference to the correct place rather than the virtual thing, which you really should delete these after you're done. But this is 
still tedious and we shouldn't have to do all of this well it's nice to be able to do this in case we need overrides uh let's just delete that because we, we don't need it to 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 have to map every one of those by hand um so that's where the auto map bones comes in and what this will do is go over the existing bones that exist in this this current system, assuming that you've assigned the correct uh, bone root, and try to map them against the correct bones. And now you see we're starting to get something here, but not all of them are there. Uh, yeah. So what do we do then? Uh, well, that's where I have, and we can apply by the way, apply shows the face. Uh, it, it, it actually sets those bones into place. And it's not gonna do that without applying by the way. So we pull open then, you know, the bone remapper again, and we see, okay, here's those bones that we have, but not every one of them are properly transformed. So why is this a problem? Well, now let's say we do, uh, we want to add her tail, the shark tail. Let's add an empty and we call it the shark tail. Okay. And then we do the same thing, skin mesh renderer. Uh, we add the shark tail. Uh, Rurune, where's your tail? There we are, there's your tail. We add that tail into the mesh, right? Uh, we add the root bone, hips. And then we look at materials as we usually do. Let's see, shark tail wants the material, specifically shark tail. And it looks like it's just the one, so we add that shark tail. Okay, and we edit the bones, or uh, the e extends to match like everything else, so just nice and around the avatar. Um, and then we do our bone remapper, and we just use the auto mapper alone, and what we get, of course, is missing bones for the tail. There, there are no bones for a tail, and then when we go to apply this, you'll see the tail still doesn't appear. So what do we do? Well, that's simple enough because that's, we could copy all those transforms over from the original mesh, but that would take some time too. Um, and if you trust it, you can just copy them from the uh, original, what I like to call the uh, import prefab. Uh, this thing here, this prefab that is normally, you know, generated from when you import, a, you know, FBX file or a um, Blender file. Uh, this prefab, you know, you, we can pull the bones out of that and start applying them in there and we can spawn them from this, uh, you know, from that and, and then remap them and whatever. But it's better... It would be cool if we just had something that created it, right? You know, so auto map bones. And we have 284, 284, and you can see here copied eight bones and then remap. And now you see all these new bones were created. And when we explore the bone system of the current existing skin mesh renderer system, we see the shark tail added, we see the hood added, we, we can see those added bones. And now from here, all we have to do is click apply and there's the tail. So I hope this is a useful tool. Um, I'll put a link in the description obviously for this tool. Um, I don't know, I just felt like it's been years that this is something that should have been built, built in and hasn't, uh, but here you are. Um, again, and if you want to you know, add features to this or suggest features or anything, uh, join our Discord, let me know. Uh, this is just one of the many tools uh, for project exploration that, um, you know, I, like I said, I, when I create something that I find that would be useful outside of just the project, um, I'll release it out to people. And here's, here's just one of those many tools.
So if you're interested in what you know what I'm doing even and what's going on here, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, of course. Bye.